Hi, it's Phil Walker, and here's today's tip for how to save money in California workers' compensation. I'm sitting here with my AMA guides, just like I know you do every evening at home. Have you had the following case? A gentleman injures his low back and then, a, then he claims that he's not able to sleep like he used to. And a doctor rates him for sleep disorder under the AMA guides. Well, how do you deal with this? There are three very simple things you need to know. First, the chart for rating sleep disorder appears on page 317 of the guides. In class one, here are what the criteria are. Reduced daytime alertness, sleep pattern is such that the individual can perform most activities of daily living. And if you meet that criteria, you get between one and 9% whole person impairment. Now I bet you're thinking like I am, there are plenty of days in the afternoon after lunch that I could qualify for that. But there are three other things the doctor's got to do to give that rating. The first is he has to have the patient undergo formal sleep studies. Those are the type of studies where you go to the sleep lab and they put the electrodes on your brain and you sleep one night all the way through and then you come back for two naps in the subsequent days and they're checking your, the electricity and your brain waves and all that stuff. You've got to have formal sleep studies that support this diagnosis and page 317 tells us that and here's what it says, quote, it is expected that the diagnosis of excessive daytime sleepiness has been supported by formal studies in a sleep lab. The second thing you need to know, and this one's really good, this rating appears in the neurology chapter, chapter 13. You can only use this chapter to rate proven neurological conditions. And that means conditions where your nerves aren't working correctly. Turn to page 305 and it says this, this chapter provides criteria for evaluating permanent impairments which are due to documented dysfunction of the brain, cranial nerves, the spinal cord, nerve roots, and the peripheral nerves and muscles, the ones that go out into the extremities. And what documented dysfunction means is the doctor has to have the patient undergo nerve tests that prove problems in the nerves. And the third thing you need to know is page 317 gives us a list of the conditions that produce neurological sleep disorder. It's a long list, but let me tell you what a couple of the things on it are. Brain tumors, Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, restless leg syndrome, and there's a whole list, and you need to have one of those neurological conditions to get this rating. So the next time you get in one of these reports, dogs, calm down. Sorry, the dogs are playing. So the next time you have one of these reports and the doctor gives the person a rating for sleep, ask these three questions. Were formal studies done? Is there a proven neurological condition, proven by tests, and is it one of the conditions listed on page 317? And if it's not, write the doctor back point out each of those areas of the guides, ask him to respond to them, and then to correct his rating. And I will promise you that in that way, you will see the great majority of your sleep claims disappear because I've probably seen these formal studies done in less than 1% of all the reports that I've reviewed. And that is your tip for how to save money in California Workers' Comp under the AMA guides today. You always know where you can reach me, Phil at AskPhilWalker.com, my website www.AskPhilWalker.com, 877-TOLL-FREE, 774-5550, and anytime you've got a question about the AMA Guides or California Workers' Comp, just ask Phil Walker. Thanks so much and I'll see you soon.